In this video, you're going to be learning core information security principles. Back in 2017, one of the largest ransomware attacks brought the NHS in the UK to its knees. Patients were turned away, surgeries were cancelled, and the entire system was at a standstill. The WannaCry attack led to a damage worth over 100 million dollars globally and it was all because of a security vulnerability that could have been patched now imagine being the one responsible for preventing such chaos that's the kind of responsibility information security professionals shoulder every day yes like every day this video is all about the principles of information security it's a fundamental framework that every cybersecurity professional needs to master. And it doesn't matter if you're already deep in your career or you're looking to level up. Today, we're going beyond the basics, breaking down the key components, the concepts, the real world applications, even the advanced strategies that will make you indispensable in this industry. So if I were you, I would stick around and you don't want to miss anything. Almost everyone you meet who wants to transition into a career in tech has their eyes on cybersecurity, and for very good reasons too. Did you know that the average salary for an information security professional in the United States is around $103,000 per year? In the UK, you're looking at roughly £53,000, and in Canada, it's about $89,000 annually. As you get more experience, these numbers only go up. Senior roles in cybersecurity, like Chief Information Security Officer, can earn you north of $250,000 a year in some markets. But high numbers like this come with huge responsibilities. You know it's not just about the paycheck. Information security doesn't just keep the hackers out these days. You are also safeguarding official infrastructures, healthcare data, financial systems, and even personal privacy from a vast array of threats. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Tolu Lokpe Michael, and for close to 10 years, I've worked in cybersecurity. I've handled everything from incident response to cloud security and ethical hacking. Basically, I've protected companies against the kinds of attacks that could destroy their reputation overnight. And in this video, I'll break down the core principles that guide our work as security professionals and explore how you can take your career and expertise to the next level. I'll be doing this by showing you how to apply this knowledge in real world scenarios while citing a few real life events along the way. Okay. And if you find this video helpful at all, please don't forget to like, share, and hit the subscribe button. We live in a time when every online purchase, every email, every login entry could be a potential target. And it's your job as a cybersecurity professional to protect these systems from being compromised. But how do we do that? Now, let's start with the basics of information security, something we call the CIA triad. This is the foundation of information security and covers three main principles confidentiality integrity and availability now if you've been in cybersecurity for a while you've definitely heard of it but let's look at why it's so important beginning with confidentiality confidentiality is about making sure that sensitive data stays in the right hands we often think of it in terms of encryption multi-factor authentication and strict access controls but it often goes beyond that a lot more than these layers of protection goes into ensuring confidentiality. Now, a great example of what happens when confidentiality isn't prioritized is the Capital One data breach in 2019. A former employee exploited a cloud vulnerability and accessed over 100 million customers' account. Why? Because sensitive data wasn't properly protected by encryption and access management this proves an important point that confidentiality isn't just about securing databases with encryption we must also implement a culture of continuous monitoring ensuring patches and updates are always current also 
conducting regular audits to prevent unauthorized access. And then the next one is we have integrity. This ensures that the data you're working with hasn't been altered or tampered with. This applies across any form of data, whether you are handling financial transactions or medical records, even a small change to that data could lead to serious consequences. Let me give you this example. In 2010, the Stuxnet virus targeted Iranian nuclear facilities by altering control system data, causing physical damage to their centrifuges. This attack was possible because it manipulated data without detection. Now to prevent something like this, we use hash functions like SHA-256 to verify data integrity. Okay, If anything has been tampered with, the hash changes, alerting you to the problem. But let's take it a step further. Blockchain technology. Blockchain is becoming a key player in maintaining data integrity. Whether transaction or action is recorded in a ledger that is immutable, meaning it cannot be changed without detection. Now, industries like finance and healthcare are beginning to use this technology to maintain the integrity of their most sensitive data. And of course, the last one, there is availability, which is often overlooked, but it's just as important as confidentiality and integrity. You can have the most secure systems in the world, but if your users can't access it when they need it, what's the use? Availability means ensuring that systems are up and running even during attacks or technical failures. In 2018, GitHub faced the largest DDoS attack in history with 1.35 terabytes per second of traffic bombarding their servers. Thanks to strong mitigation strategies, they stayed online. This is why redundancy, backup systems, and DDoS protection are critical for maintaining availability. Now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about how to decide who gets in and what they can access. This is where authentication and authorization comes in. Authentication answers the question, who are you? And it's not just about passwords anymore. In fact, 80% of data breaches happen because of weak or stolen passwords. That's why we use multi-factor authentication, okay? MFA adds layers of security and asking you for something you know, like password, something you have, like your phone, or something you are, like your fingerprint. Microsoft reports that MFA can block 99.9% .9 of account compromise attacks. So if you're not using it yet, it's time to start. Once you have identified, that is, authenticated that this person is who they say they are, the next thing is authorization authorization kicks in. This controls what that person can access. It's like you're saying because of who you are, this is only as far as you can go within this system. Okay. Now in cybersecurity, we use systems like role-based access control to ensure that people only have access to the data they need for their job. A nurse, for example, should only have access to patient medical records not the hospital's financial systems. Like, what's the nurse gonna do with that? And the reason for this is because the access people are allowed should be limited to their specific responsibilities to minimize security risk. By restricting access, we reduce the chances of sensitive information being exposed, either accidentally or intentionally. Now, building on this, risk management as well plays a very crucial role in maintaining a secure environment. Risk management helps you identify, assess, and deal with threats before they become a major problem. It's like running a business and you don't wait until your cash flow is a mess to start budgeting, right? You stay ahead of it. Same with cybersecurity. You are identifying threats, calculating the impact, and deciding what needs to be locked down now versus what can wait. When you combine strong access controls with smart risk management, you're building the security your data needs around it and staying ahead of potential problems. But this all starts with first, knowing where your weaknesses are. Because in our line of work, 
weaknesses and blind spots that are left unattended to will eventually be used against you. It's only a matter of time. An example of this happening in real life, which happens more often than you think, is the Sony Pictures hack in 2014. It's a perfect case of how one overlooked vulnerability can grow into a disaster. Hackers gained access to Sony's network through unpatched software, something that could have been easily fixed with a routine update. Once they got in, they stole and leaked unreleased films, confidential company emails, and even personal information of employees, including social security numbers. Although the attack was widely believed to have been politically motivated, but the damage was already done. So once you know where your risks are, the next step is figuring out how to control them. See, this doesn't always mean spending big on the latest firewall or the latest technology or anything of such. Sometimes the best control is proper training. Yes, educating employees on how to avoid phishing attacks can be just as effective as an expensive security system. Yes, if your team members, especially the non-IT ones, can learn to use systems securely and watch out for dangers, that is less work for you. For the purpose of training, you want to try gamification, you know, make it fun and rewarding. It could even be as simple as creating quizzes, competitions, or challenges where employees earn points or reward for identifying phishing emails or spotting security risk. You know, when training feels like a game, People are more engaged and they actually learn better. This is one of the simple ways you can build a culture where everyone becomes a part of your security team. The more empowered your employees feel to spot, threat and act securely, the fewer vulnerabilities you would have to worry about. And that's the beauty of it. Your organization doesn't always need to throw money at fancy tech when you can strengthen your first line of defense your people. Yes. Look, at the end of the day, cybersecurity isn't just about technology. It's about responsibility. There are legal and ethical requirements that come with handling data. Regulations like GDPR in Europe or HIPAA in the US ensure that companies protect personal information. Now, failure to comply can lead to huge fines and reputational damage. But Beyond the law, that aside, there's a deeper responsibility for us as cybersecurity professionals. We work in a field built on trust, and that means we need to follow ethical guidelines like those in the CISSP Code of Ethics. We have to act in the public interest and make sure that our actions are always legal, responsible, and transparent. Now, let's talk about cryptography, one of the most powerful tools in our arsenal. It's what keeps information secure, even if it is intercepted, okay? The two main types of encryption are symmetric, like AES, okay? And asymmetric, like RSA, okay? There's symmetric and there's asymmetric. On a side note, I have a whole video dedicated to this. So if you want to learn more about data encryption, go check it out, okay? So symmetric encryption is fast. And it's often used for things like encrypting databases, okay? But a symmetric encryption, on the other hand, is used for securing communication between two parties who have never met. But here's the thing. Quantum computing is coming. Companies like Google, IBM, and Microsoft, they've made significant progress on this already. And once more advancement is made with it, it could break many of the encryption methods we use today. That is why cybersecurity experts are already working on quantum safe cryptography, which will be able to withstand attacks from these next gen computers. In fact, there's a lot going on with this development. For example, the US National Institute of Standard and Technology finalized the first three post quantum cryptographic standard, which are designed to protect against the future of decryption capabilities of quantum computers. As it is, according to the World Economic Forum, there's an increasing concern over the Harvest Now Decrypt Later strategy, where 
hackers may store encrypted data today, anticipate that future quantum computers will eventually be able to decrypt it. This makes it even more urgent for industries, especially those dealing with sensitive term data, to transition to quantum safe standards like now. So while we are waiting for all of that to happen, what can you do right now to improve your cybersecurity game? I have some practical steps to get you started, okay? And I will tell you, top of my list is conducting regular audits and penetration testing. You will be shocked at how some of these routine tests can help you pick up on vulnerabilities that can lead to bigger issues. The idea is not to wait for something to, to go wrong, then everyone start looking around for solutions. No. With regular audit, you can proactively spot and patch weaknesses. And to do this effectively, we use tools like Metasploit. Trust me, Metasploit is an incredibly effective tool for this because it allows you to simulate the techniques a real attacker would use to exploit vulnerabilities as well. For example, you can run a series of control attacks on your network and you target everything from outdated software to misconfigured firewalls. And by doing this, Metasploit not only helps you find the weaknesses in your defenses, but also shows you the impact an attack could have if left unaddressed. This hands-on approach gives you a clear picture of where your security gaps are and how to fix them before an actual hacker has the chance to exploit them. Another important step you can take to improve your company's security is staying updated with threat intelligence. Threat intelligence sounds a bit something like CIA should be dealing with, doesn't it? But let me break it down. So, right now, you live in a neighborhood. Depending on how secure your community is, you will need to keep your eyes and ears open for any information or rumors about potential break-ins, common criminal activities, even safety issues in the area, right? Cool. Cyber threats work the same way. There is always, and I mean always going to be some new exploit or attack method on the scene and knowing about it early can make the difference between protecting your organization and falling victim. One of the easiest ways to stay ahead is by following feeds like USAT, okay? These platforms keep you updated on emerging vulnerabilities and attacks so you can act fast. I remember a few years ago into my career, when a vulnerability in a software I used at work was flagged. Thanks to keeping up with these fields, we got the heads up early, applied the necessary patch, and avoided potential breach that could have caused serious damage. Another tip I have found quite helpful, personally, is running incident response drills. Having a plan is good, but ensuring that your team knows exactly how to execute it during a real incident is even better. Just like how we have fire drills so everyone knows what to do in case of an emergency, your team needs incident response drills so they know their role and act quickly under pressure. The more prepared your team is, the faster they can react to contain and resolve any incident, minimizing damage to your organization. Okay? So I will leave you with this challenge. Don't just sit back and hope things hold up and what you have presently in terms of security will work out. Don't do that get proactive test your systems run your drills and plug into the intel that will keep you ahead of the curve when it comes to cyber security you really can never be too prepared now guys if you found value in today's video make sure to like subscribe and share it with everyone around you and remember security isn't just a job it's a responsibility I hope I've been able to leave you better than I found you. Till I see you next time, keep winning.